Hello, everybody. Welcome to Manila, the Philippines. This is the FIBA Basketball World Cup. It's semifinals day, and it's Serbia taking on Canada. Canada, for the first time, have made it this far in the tournament. They'd never made it to the quarterfinals, and here they are just one step away from the final. This is a big moment in their basketball history. Hello, everybody. I'm Jeff Taylor, and I'm joined by Mike Taylor. And Mike, biggest moment in Canada basketball history, really, for this national team. You feel like it has to be. Yeah, they've been fantastic in this World Cup. Progressed to this point earned their spot here and now they face an excellent challenge ahead with this Serbia team. Clash of styles out here tonight. Excellent European tradition against the rising America squad. Well think about who they have beaten to get here. They opened with a win over France. Uh, they followed that up with a romp over Lebanon and then they took care of Latvia. Uh, they slipped up against Brazil, which meant they had to go out and beat Spain, the defending champions, but they did that. And then they followed up in the quarterfinals, a big win over Slovenia. And uh, they have got, as you can tell, uh, a roster full of big time personalities uh, like Dylan Brooks, like Shea Gilgis, Alexander, like RJ Barrett. It is a roster to envy. It's a deep and talented roster and for Jordi Hernandez and staff, they are going through the same or similar transition to the FIBA style like the United States. And they have done an excellent job throughout the tournament. They face their biggest challenge yet today against Serbia. Well, there's no doubt about it. This is a Serbia team uh, that has so much tradition behind it. You know, as part of the former Yugoslavia, of course, uh, many players from Serbia competing for Yugoslavia. Since they've become Serbia, they have yet to win that, that title, yet they have certainly uh, been right there. They, they finished runners up in 2014 to the United States. They were blown away. 2010, they made it to the semifinals and were, and were just seconds away from making it to the final before falling to Turkey. Uh, this is a Serbia team that I think a lot of people have undervalued perhaps because Nikola Jokic didn't play, but they have showed the power, the tradition, the might of this great basketball nation. And that is what Canada has to overcome. Yeah, they've been to three semifinals since 2010. And again, they have the pride from the tradition. Head coach Svetislav Pesic has done many wonderful things in his career. And at this late stage of his career to guide this team to this stage again is something special. But they are a high percentage precision team. And the challenge for Canada today is much like the challenge for USA against Lithuania. Serbia will look to control tempo and dictate style of play. So Serbia taking on Canada starts uh, at 4.45 local time here in Manila. And then tonight, USA go up against Germany. Uh, these, in my opinion, are the best days in international basketball. This is when so much is at stake. There you have it again. It's confirmed. Serbia against Canada on the right in the first semifinal. And then USA taking on Germany later tonight. And you can look at the paths that each have taken to get to this point. It has been impressive stuff uh, from both of these countries. So we're going to have a pause for the playing of the national anthems of Canada and Serbia.
Please remain standing for the national anthem of Serbia. Well, the national anthems always get us charged up for these games. And it just reminds us what this is all about. These players out here playing for their countries. Svetislav Pezic and uh, Jordi Fernandez shaking hands before the game. Pezic, obviously one of the all-time greats in basketball, having uh, steered different national teams to the title, including, including Yugoslavia, the former Yugoslavia back in 2002. And uh, for the referees tonight, we've got Johan Rosso from France, the crew chief in the middle. We got Manuel Mazzoni from Italy on the left, and we've got Giulio Anaya from Panama on the right. And what I think an honor for those guys to be doing this game. This is going to be electric stuff. And what an honor for Jip to be here. I mean, he's had some good games, but I mean, now the official mascot has really taken it to a different level. Canada against Serbia, and he's got the best seat in the house. He does, and as we've said before, Chip is an excellent mascot, really high level, representing this tournament in a fantastic way. So Canada, we knew they would have a good team, Mike, and uh, they have delivered. Shea Gilgis, Alexander, Dwight Powell, RJ Barrett, Kelly Olenek, the captain, Dylan Brooks in the starting five. Lou Dort, Alexander Walker, Edgem Alexander, Zach Eady, uh, Phil Scrub, and Trey Bell Haynes coming off the bench for coach Jordy Fernandez. And you have to highlight Shea Gilgis Alexander quite possibly. Well, he is definitely one of the front runners for the MVP award at this stage. Well, he has really established himself as a star in the NBA with the Oklahoma City Thunder, and he's doing the same thing here on the World Cup stage. He's been an outstanding dynamic playmaker he's controlled tempo of the game and he will face tremendous ball pressure from this serbia defense game planning against him and dylan brooks you can look at his numbers he's going to be playing for houston and i don't think the numbers do him justice really certainly for the uh, the overall impact on the game you know he's adopted the role of the villain yes he's an agitator he does a great job defensively plays his role to the t and Jeff, we love what Jordi Fernandez has done with this Canadian team. He's guided them to their first semifinals appearance. And again, they have an outstanding possibility today, the adjustment of playing against Serbia and their different style of play. I mean, it's one thing to have a talented roster. It's another thing to get that roster to this, this part of the competition. Nikola Jovic, Bogdan Bogdanovic, Ogden Dobrich, uh, Stefan Jovic and Nikola Milutunov, I think very underrated, really, uh, in the grand scheme of things. Petrusev, Marinkovic, Ristic, Guterich, Davidovic, uh, Simonic, and Abramovic. Simonic, of course, had the kidney removed after receiving a blow uh, against the Dominican Republic. Bogdan Bogdanovic showed up big time in the last game. Well, he represents this Serbian's offense to a T. They are high percentage. They are a well-oiled machine. And many times, Bogdan Baldanovic, the leading scorer, is finishing plays with efficiency. And we wanted to highlight Philippe Petrusov as well uh, for what he did. Look at that, three of three from deep against Lithuania. And just a tremendous difference overall. Well, again, all these pieces with Serbia fit together so well. When they need a pick and pop shooting big, Petrusov is right there to answer the call. 
Svetislav Pezic, the head coach, one of the best coaches I've ever seen in action. Well, he's got so much experience to draw from here, and he really had his team ready to play against Lithuania. The Naismith Trophy, this is what all of the players want to live by the end of this tournament. It's almost kind of teasing them, isn't it? Putting it at midcourt before the semifinal. It's right there. It's It speaks for itself. Need no motivation. Both of these teams are going to be ready, and Jeff, we're in store for a wonderful doubleheader of semifinal basketball here at the World Cup in Manila. Well, Serbia beating China, Puerto Rico, South Sudan. They fell to Italy 78-76 to end up second in their group. But uh, they then beat the Dominican Republic. And, of course, they really laid the wood to Lithuania uh, to get this far. And like I said, 2010, 2014, they made it to the semis as well. Five side. Pick and pop. Da gurne mu dole. Ako preuzimaju, smiri se i kreni u njemu u blok i samo. And. Chip letting us know how much time there is. He has been spinning it on his head. I wonder if he's tired because it's the end of the tournament. Okay, there he is. Oh, and there he went. He it's all about this show. It's all about the game right now. He doesn't want to take any attention away from these two fantastic teams, all the great players and coaches on this court. So it's Americas against Europe. Really, it's Americas against Eastern Europe, old Europe. And uh, first ever semifinal appearance in the FIBA Basketball World Cup for Canada. And again, this is a Canada team that, you know, we've been talking about what they've had for the past decade. Look out, Canada are on the rise. They're going to make it. And they just couldn't, for whatever reason, they weren't making that next step. Uh, but here they have done it. They've loaded up like never before. And uh, they've still needed all hands on deck. They've had to win some really tough games. The future is now. More Canadians in the NBA, more Canadians overseas making an impact. And now the Canadian national team with a big achievement to get to this point. Let's see how far they can take it. Good afternoon and welcome to Manila, the Philippines. The FIBA Basketball World Cup semifinal is underway between Serbia and Canada. Serbia wearing the, the white and attacking the basket to the right on your screen. And Milutunov goes to work early. And a reach is called and a foul on Powell. And Jeff, you said Milutunov is underrated. His size and physicality right there you see is a challenge for Dwight Powell. One of the ways Serbia will try to control the tempo of the game is by going inside and, inside and establishing the post. So they're trying to establish it. They get it to him again, and Dylan Brooks knocks it away. Off and run in Canada, R.J. Barrett. He gets blocked. How about that from Dobrinc? Sneaky athleticism. And again, Canada attacking, and Powell is fouled. Well, that's a great first defensive stand for Canada and a wow. great recovery. Dobrich that is a serious block. But again, setting the tone in the first possessions, both teams establishing great plays defensively. So Powell makes the first, scores the first point of this semifinal. Of course, he's been playing in all the games. A tad undersized at times if he has to guard guys like Milutunov but he is a great mobile big man which suits their defense very well this lineup has been excellent defensively for canada 
You can see Serbia averaging 3.2 blocks per game. They really did get layup after layup against Spain, uh, excuse me, in their game against Lithuania, and they get one here, Milutunov. And a great drop off from Brogdanovich. Late delivery at the rim, Milutunov just so big. Easy slam. The Dobrich will guard Shea, Gilgis, Alexander, and then I'm sure if Ramovich will come off the bench and get on top of him as well. Olenek missing in the lane. Bogdanovich quickly down the court. Looking for space, gets inside. And as Canada collapse on him, he makes the pass and it's fouled. And it'll be interesting to see some of the choices Serbia makes in transition. They want to control tempo here. But again, Bogdanovic attacks extremely well, and they had another opportunity right at the rim. That was the Milutunov dunk. Here they are passing out Dobrich for three. That's good. Dylan Brooks top locked, denied the cut for Bogdanovic. He cut back door and on the pass, kicked it over for the open three. Good teamwork from Serbia. Dylan Brooks open, so he puts it up, clangs it off the back. And the ball hit out of bounds off the lower backboard and rim. And one of the challenges for Canada is Serbia is going to make them work hard together for good shots against pressure defense. That's a new experience for this Canada team. Jovic falls over, gets it to Bogdanovic. And the three-pointer stretches the lead to seven. Bounce pass into the corner goes R.J. Barrett. He misses. Olenek bats it out. A new 14. Shea Gilgis Alexander stops again to R.J. This time he's on target. And Jeff, great effort from Olenek to get the extra possession on the offensive rebound, but strong side help. Stay home when Shea Gilgis Alexander picks up his dribble. Barrett makes him pay. See, he's been averaging 14.7 points per game. Had a great semifinal, uh, great quarterfinal against Slovenia. Great second half. Milutunov going up against Brooks. And they do not get it off in time. Good defense for Canada. Canada has been consistent defensively the entire World Cup. Athletic, active, and right there forcing a shot clock violation. Good work early in the game. R.J. Barrett. Here's Olenek. And you can count that one as well. Two threes for Canada. Settling down. Look at the bounce pass. And the rim protection was there by Powell. Again, you can see the execution here they leave the layup short but they uh, are just getting left it short didn't he didn't block it yeah getting so many opportunities at the rim this is the precision and high percentage offense that serbia is thought he had blocked it and here's dobrich again and that's an encouraging development for canada i mean serbia just did not miss those shots at all against lithuania here's you just alexander missing Dobritz gets up. Good catch. I don't know if that was a lob, but it's uh, still Serbia basketball. A little off target, but right idea. Well, Danovitz gets blocked. The help coming from Kelly Olenek. So again, you see Brooks really working hard. One on one on Bogdanovic and great help side defense from Olenek. Buries the three at one end, makes a block at the other. Excellent start for Kelly Olenek, veteran captain from Canada. Yeah, he played as far back as the 2010 FIBA Basketball World Cup. Dobritz. Bad miss, good strong rebound for Dylan Brooks. Goes all the way down, and the foul called on Bogdanovich.
So, Jeff, a key in this game is Canada's transition offense. And you would expect coming in the high percentage precision attack from Serbia to control the tempo in the half court. But in the early going, the length and athleticism has forced some misses at the rim. Uncharacteristic for Serbia here in the World Cup. And it's resulted in runouts for Canada. This is a great sign early in the game for Jordi Fernandez and his team. So Bogdanovich got a lot of ball, but on the follow through, he got him on the arm as well. So it's a 9-8 lead for Canada. They were down 8-1. to one. Good defense from Shea, knocking it out of bounds. Stefan Jovic, one of the veterans in this Serbia team, hit a lot of threes against Lithuania. Being guarded by Shea Gilgis Alexander. There's Jovic, and nobody picks up the young Jovic, Nikola Jovic. And that was too easy. They've had great defensive stands early. That one they gave an easy one to Serbia. Jay, this time RJ Barrett comes off. Look at him, handed off to Powell. Canada like a well-oiled machine right now. You expect Barrett to catch and shoot. He attacks a closeout and makes a great delivery to teammate Dwight Powell in the lane. And the pass goes over Milutunov. Great play design from Serbia there. They tried to back screen Milutunov to the rim. The pass was just off target. Opportunity here great, for Canada. Great replay of Barrett driving the baseline and handing it off to his teammate for the dunk. And now Dylan Brooks drives in, scores. It's a very confident look at Canada team. Forget the experience at this level. They look ready. Canada right now on a 12-2 run. Jovic goes right at Shea Gilgis Alexander and gets the blocking call. Intelligent offense there. They recognize the switch and advantage. They put Jovic in the post on Shea Gilgis Alexander. Late clock, he attacks, drawing the foul. Dobritz with a little runner. Beautiful release. Brooks, and one pass too many, but that's going to be Canada basketball. Here's the replay, clearly off his knee. Nico Alexander Walker is coming into the game now, so it's going to be Canada basketball. And R.J. Barrett sits down. Lou Dort has also come into the game. Stefan Jovic and Marco Guderich. Excuse me. Uh, Great defense there from Serbia. Avramovic checking into the game, matching up with Shea Gilgis Alexander. His ball pressure forces the turnover here. Again, the push, the contest. Avramovic impacting the game right away. Looking inside here, fronting the post. Nice high-low. 
foul. Really good execution there. Nice high low delivery in traffic. Bulatunov drawing the foul, getting to the free throw line. So here's the shot chart with Milutunov. You see he really works inside 1.6 time per touch, average among centers here in the World Cup. But again, he loves to work down in that low post. He's a skilled finisher right at the rim and a big part of this Serbia high percentage offense. Oh, Bogdanovic. Big offensive rebound and put back, helping Serbia reclaim the lead. Bogdanovic showing his leadership there, grabbing the offensive rebound off the free throw. Trey Bell Haynes into the game for Canada. Another defensive deflection. And great transition offense. Abramovich with his head up finds Jovic running out ahead for the easy two. Kyle Alexander into the pick and roll with Trey Bell Haynes. Forced into the turnover. Excellent ball pressure from Serbia, and this is what they've done all World Cup long. Serbia bench reacts. Abramovich into the front court here. Bogdanovich driving on Dylan Brooks, draws the foul. Again, the ball pressure will not impact Bogdanovich. He's seen it. And they're more prepared for it as, as with the, after seeing the Slovenia game, the way Dylan Brooks got into Luka Doncic. Again, it's a 7-0 Serbia run. Outstanding drives to the basket here, attacking this ball pressure from Canada. You can see this has been the number one team in the World Cup, averaging 1.44 points per possession on drives. Very efficient. It's been a big part of their high percentage offense. And what a great mid-quarter run here from this Serbia team. So we're having some mic problems. I'm gonna take over for a while here. Canada passing it down low. And Serbia another chance having raced into a six-point lead and another layup. And with that, they are going to call a timeout. Serbia took some early shots, but here they are now up eight in Canada searching for answers. Abramovic, like he always does, is like a shot of espresso but to this Serbia team. He comes in, and with that basket, they have to call a timeout. 159 to go in the first. Let's hear the let's go down to the bench. Alright, we're gonna go uh, Nikhil, you're gonna go Nova. Alright, watch the press here. Triangle, we bring it. Nova, 
RJ, bring it to Dylan. Dylan, you bring it up. Either you hit back to Nikhil and KO you flash, and then RJ, time your cut, all right? If not, you just play this side, you have it available. Hey, we gotta get stops, we gotta get back, all right? Hey, keep your composure, they'll give us fouls back. All right, come on, come on. Here we go. Defense on three, one, two, three. We're in Vegas, we're in Vegas. Let's go, we fine, let's go. We got shit, come on. Well, you look at the tribes per game team leaderboard, and you've got Canada up there at 31.3, and you got Serbia down at 28th at 18.7. How do you how do you interpret that? Well, Jeff, throughout the tournament, Canada has been excellent with Shea Gilders Alexander in the isolations. Serbia playing a lot of pick and roll, making passes, using their teammates. I think that accounts for a lot of the drive numbers that you see there with Canada being high and Serbia being lower. So Alexander Walker and Canada looking for progress and they turn it over. Offensive foul. And a very dangerous part of the game right now for Canada. You simply do not want to fall behind, too far behind this Serbia team. Well, Serbia made their run. Let's see if Canada can answer. Jovic hands it off. Marinkovic almost fumbled it away, but got it back. Here's Guterich. Takes it deep. Now back outside to Marinkovic for three, and that was short, but look at Nikola Jovic with the rebound. Abramovic. Now Guterich, he gets it up, and that's off. R.J. Barrett rebounds and takes it the other way, and now a foul called on Guterich. Clatters in to Olenek. But, Jeff, you could hear Coach Pesic yelling to his team, take a foul, take a foul. They want to stop the break and set their defense with a smart foul. to go in the first quarter. Canada need a bucket. They need to stop the bleeding. And a foul called to Marinkovic. That is team foul number four, and Olenek goes down hard. It could be that he got hit right where you don't want to get hit. Coach Jordy Fernandez imploring the officials to review it. Olenek trying to set a solid screen there. You can see no real intent. He just kind of tried to get through the screen and Olenek went down. And they, Jeff, they will review. Absolutely. Let's go down and listen to the refs. So angle, maybe this one, yes. You can go slow motion. Again. Okay, he's going to the hip, but he's going with the forearm. I think it's a personal, it's a regular contact, a regular foul. Yeah, there is no elbow, there is no punch, there is nothing open palm. So we stay like this, okay? After review, the decision of personal power remains. The contact didn't meet the criteria of a sportsman like. Okay, well, they said it. I mean, we don't have to explain it. There is no intent from their viewpoint. And Jeff, while this is happening, the big challenge right now earlier, the two fouls for Shea Gilgis Alexander. How does Canada weather this storm and how can they keep their offense productive? So Linick has it back in the game, puts it up, and he's fouled from behind by Guterich. Free throws coming for Canada. And I love the way Olenek has started this game with aggressiveness. He buries a big three. 
impacts the game defensively. And now here, strong to the basket, drawing the foul. Olenek showing leadership. Look at the strong play, draws the foul. And that's going to be the second foul on Marco Guterich. So Olenek goes to the line and makes the first. It looks like he's uh, recovered. I mean, you know, basketball could be a physical game. And uh, we were just reminded of that on that last sequence. Uh, with Olenek going down and he takes both free throws and makes it so a little something positive for Canada here goes Guterich final minute of a first quarter that has seen uh, runs basketball this is a game of runs and Serbia have been on one now Canada trying to come back here's Marinkovic Ball batted out, but R.J. Barrett has it. Is he going to go all the way? And he has it taken away by Avramovich. And Avramovich, his ability to play defense is really elite. And he showed us on this play, and now Serbia have been appealing for an unsportsmanlike. And the referee is going over to the Serbia bench and saying it's a foul. Sit down. And I don't think they're going to review it. They could review it if Serbia wanted to use their challenge to try to upgrade it, but they will not. So a player who has really emerged, Avramovic, I mean, he was a guy that they used to include in the team during the qualifiers. Uh, but he was really a role player. Definitely was not first choice, but they needed him. Has really evolved in one of their key men at this FIBA Basketball World Cup. Avramovic making a big impact, as you say, Jeff. He sparked this run defensively. And look at the ball pressure from the Serbia team, doing a great job slowing Canada down. So Alexander Walker has it. Canada trying to take the last shot of the quarter. Alexander Walker to the corner. Barrett for three. And Olenek had a tip. Didn't get it to go. And Serbia, very impressive. The way they stared down that adversity and charged it to the lead. They're on top, 23 to 15 at the end of one. As you take a look at the numbers, you see Serbia high percentage, 53% in the first quarter. Canada only 33. Again, it's been the defensive ball pressure. Six turnovers for Canada in the first quarter. The mid-quarter run, you see Bogdanovic with a backdoor cut, getting it to the second side for his teammates. Three, again, using the pressure against Canada. Here was Barrett. Finding Olenek, great front court three-point shooting for the big man. Again, Dylan Brooks impacting the game on defense, getting a bucket here. And then the transition run out from Jovic. Avramovic impacting the game after subbing in. But in this first quarter, the adversity for Canada facing two fouls for leader Shea Gilgis-Alexander. Well, there is Jim, and you know what he's telling you? He's telling you to get courtside 1891 in your smartphone. And, uh, well, you need to do it. Scan the QR code, download the 1891 app for the latest news, sports, videos, games, and much more from the world of international basketball. Well, you know, Canada have been knocked back on, Canada have been knocked back on their heels, Mike. Uh, what do you expect to see from them here at the start of the second quarter? Well, Jeff, Shea Gilgis-Alexander is back in with two fouls. Jordi Fernandez recognizing the importance of this time of the game. So 
Shea Gilgis Alexander back in the game, along with Alexander Walker, Olenek, Lou Dort, and R.J. Barrett. Serbia into their defense, packing the paint. Big bucket from Lou Dort. Jeff, you gotta love Lou Dort. Two-way player, defends, hits threes. Really big part of this Canada team. I liked hearing the play-by-play, -play, Mike. I thought you did a pretty good job. Well, uh, I think Jip got in there and messed up my microphone. I think Jip was playing some tricks on us with this when he went technical difficulties. So now back down to Petrusev and Serbia trying to keep the momentum here. Is Guterres for three. And again, Jeff, on post reaction, one of the most difficult places to guard is the ball side corner, stretching out the defense. Guderich makes him pay with a big three. Olenek into the corner, Alexander Walker. You can count it. Hey, we got a shootout here. Great pass from Olenek. Hold spacing in the corner, let the ball find you and knock it down. Ramovich going up against Dort. Dort goes over Davidovic's pick. Screen. Now they switch. Guterich just hit a three from the corner. Here he is. He ends up with a layup. Great work inside. Petrosev sealing Lou Dort on the switch. And wide open layup for Serbia. Alexander Walker lets it fly, but a foul was called before. And you're not going to get to this stage of the competition, Mike, like Canada have, and not have, have faced adversity already. They have faced plenty of it. But it's uh, if you're a Canada fan, you know you're nervous because this is Serbia you're playing against. And again, you, you can't ever underestimate the experience of being on the big stage before. This is the first time for Canada in the semifinals, and now they have some game adversity. Beautiful play here. RJ gets it. He's fouled. Guterich, his foul previously has sent him to the bench. He now has three fouls. So that is a big development. And a great back screen on the baseline here. Nice pass from Olenek. But I love the way Barrett is impacting the game here. Not just shooting, putting the ball on, his fl on the floor, basket cut off the back door screen. Again, with Shea Gildas Alexander facing the struggles of fouls. They need to look at other places. Alexander Walker and Barrett have really stepped up along with Kelly Olenek. So that was Bogdanovich's foul. He's got two as well. And Barrett makes both. Bramovich takes it away now. Get it over to Bogdanovich. Petrusev going to work down low. And a foul called on Barrett. And again, one of the ways you like to control tempo in the FIBA game is to put the ball in the post. Again, with the size advantage on Barrett, he makes a strong move to the hoop. And it's not always getting a bucket. It's picking up a foul. We've seen him do it with Barrett and earlier SGA. I think it's because of his arms were kind of wrapped around him on the side. That made that call easier for the ref. Petrusev, or excuse me, Marinkovic goes down, but he gets it to Davidovic. He puts it up at late in the shot clock, gets it back. Now Bogdanovic hits the three. What a shooter. I think Barrett almost committed the foul, and Bogdanovic kept his concentration, just slid to his left and drilled the three. Avramovic, meanwhile, just knocks it out of Shea, Shea's uh, hands. You know, and again, Avramovic is super competitive. He's doing a great job of really making work, making Shea Gilders Alexander, as we see the big shot and leadership from Bogdanovic. Well, nobody made more three-pointers at the last FIBA Basketball World Cup than Bogdan Bogdanovic. And the way he's been shooting them lately, you never know. He might finish as the top this time. There is another miss. Alexander Walker almost reached over to try to knock that ball away. Avramovic for three. I 
Alexander Walker goes up, travels with the attention from guess who, Abramovich. His activity on defense is really impressive. When you talk about a defense starting with the point guard and ball pressure, Abramovich is the definition of that. His impact in this game has been significant. And the pass got away from Petrusev. Lou Dork falls down, but keeps his composure and hands it off to Alexander Walker. Dork stops in the lane, puts it up. And Serbia get it back. Dort did a great job getting into the lane. He got a wide open look, just rimmed it out, and then called for the foul here as he followed his own shot. Again, you like the activity, you like the effort. Dwight Powell back into the game as Milutunov is in for Serbia. Canada in the semifinals of this FIBA Basketball World Cup for the first time taking on Serbia. We were uh... Okay, they, they were beaten finalists uh, in 2014 Serbia really played well to get to the final but then crashed heavily against the United States and the Kyrie Irving game when he went off got the MVP here's Bogdanovich gets it down low he wow. goes up strong what a quick jump that was and again they're they're top locking him denying his cuts to the ball from the corner so he's going back door that time he finished in the post beautiful drive from Shea Gilgis Alexander <laughs> traveling on Bogdanovich Okay, good work there. Olenek with active hands. That's not usual. You see Bogdanovich travel, but excellent contest from Olenek there. Let's see if Canada can, Canada can further trim into this deficit. Well, there's a couple of times when Bogdanovich has had Barrett and now Olenek almost uh, barging into him, but no contact. That time, Canada come off better. Cap Powell. Oh, doesn't go up, passes it outside. Here's Shea, Gilgis Alexander is short. But Jeff, that's really good offense. How about the lob? How about the smarts from Dobritz? Again, great teamwork for a good look, the type of shots they want. They've got to have basket coverage and floor balance. A oh, beautiful drive from Alexander Walker. The cousin of, uh, of Shea. Gilgis Alexander. And the whistle blows and a foul has been called. Spain led by 12 points against Canada in that do or die game. Late, we're going to the fourth quarter. Yeah, it's early as there was a miscommunication on the execution of that play from Serbia. Jovic commits Serbia's third foul of this quarter. You know, we've seen Serbia make a run. Canada, despite the foul trouble from Shea Gilgis Gilgis Alexander, they have plenty of time here. They want to try to cut into this deficit. Shea, scored by Dobritz, and gets the foul on Dobritz. And again, you see how difficult Shea Gilgis Alexander is to contain. So ball skilled, hey, uses his body well. Look at this, Pau Gasol, FIBA Basketball World Cup 2023. Ambassador is here. And of course, we all remember Powell when he was the MVP of the 2006 FIBA Basketball World Cup. 
legendary player, first class person. Great to see him here representing FIBA in Manila. Oh. Jay misses the first. And gets the second. You know, he does such a great job getting to the free throw line. The more times he gets there, the better rhythm and feel he has for the game. But give Serbia credit. They're defending him extremely well here in the first half. Canada 8 of 10 at the free throw line. Milutunov. And the foul called on Brooks. Hey, Jeff. Who reacts. That's his third foul, Dylan Brooks. Look at the Serbia fan section react to Brooks picking up this foul. And again, what we've seen out of Brooks in previous games, that was light. Ball doesn't lie. Do they know he has three fouls? You think? I'm sure the coaching staff is making decisions right now. Three fouls. It's pretty risky to play him with three fouls, and here comes Barrett. Barrett in for a sub. They just oh, an unsportsmanlike foul has been called on Serbia. An unnecessary push after the made free throw. Watch Dobrinz. No, it's not. It's on Nikola Jovic. As Fedeslav Pezic says, are we going to go look at this? But this would not be a wise coaching challenge right now. Save it for the second half. He for is a more challenging it. Play. Okay. I thought he was saying, well, we're going to go challenge this, aren't we? We're, go we're going to go look at it. So let's listen to Johan Rosso and Julio Anaya. on the back it's on dead ball. with two hands it's on dead ball but there is no act of violence there is it's just a push with two hands so it's a personal foul can you go back the basket winning already or yeah uh, let's see let's see however this is a personal foul because it's pushing on the back we will down, downgrade and it will be Red Bull uh, out, uh, out of one baseline. Okay? So, after review, the contact didn't meet the criteria of unsportsmanlike. The foul of number five white will be downgrade to personal foul. So we have no foul. So we have, no so we have foul. personal foul. Push on the back with two hands. So we go from unsportsmanlike to personal foul. Okay? To five white. Five white. So he's the fifth foul. So he will shoot two. Okay, he's in the penalty, so two shots. Okay, good. Okay, well, you heard it. They're going to downgrade it to a normal foul. And Pezic will maintain his challenge for later, so that was good usage of that. I mean, you see a lot of pushing and everything else, and I guess the fact that Olenek had position there that made that gave him an advantage there, didn't it? You thought maybe he sold it well? Well, one of the places where there's a lot of cheap shots in basketball are those free throw blockout situations. Sometimes offensive teams will run a play where they run a cross screen to get an offensive rim, but other times they'll just try to bully somebody under the basket. And that time Jovic really unnecessarily gave Olinik the two shots in the in the back. But I think Olinik, you know, sold it a little bit as well. Here's Bogdanovic, steps back, it's good! Oh. Wow! And Jeff, that's well defended from Alexander Walker. He was right there, got a good contest. Bogdanovic just really locked in. He's got 15 points. Skip pass to R.J. Barrett. 
Back to Atlantic. RJ Barrett, it looks good. It is good. And again, good teamwork there. They played the last few seconds of that possession, five on four. Well, Doberts is going to be uh, a little bruised after this encounter. He's continually getting up off the hardwood. Watch this. So he was battling away with Shea, you yeah. know, just Alexander, and his right shoulder was caught by one of the Canadian players. Well, he's holding Shea Gilgis Alexander in that situation, trying to, you know, tie him up. Jovic outside, Dobrik, and the three. Well, his left shoulder certainly looks good. Back to an eight-point lead. Nice handoff. Great delivery there. Nice play. Again, you can see Canada working together against the pressure. Back cut, penetration to the rim, drop off and finish from Powell. Bounce pass, Milutunov! Well, anything you can do, I can do as well. RJ from the right, and good box out, Milutunov. Jovic, his pass, oh. tap, but it goes to Milutunov, who hustles down the court. And Canada now trail by 10. But Jeff, right now, Bogdan Bogdanovic is on the court with two fouls. It would be really good for Canada to try to post him or make him guard to pick up that third. That would impact this game. And uh, Gilgis Alexander draws the foul. So he will go to the line. That was good. That was good fortune for Serbia because the deflection Sent the ball right into the hands of the open Milutuno. Coach Pesic reacting, taking Bogdan Bogdanovic off the court. 15 points in the early going, protecting him with the two fouls here. But it's a good sign for Canada. Shea Gilgis Alexander back to the free throw line. Well, Bogdanovich, 15 points. He's had a whale of a tournament. Came in averaging 18.8 .8 points per game. Little tune off catches. Intelligent basketball for Serbia. Shade to Powell. And misses the layup. Marinkovic on the break. And a push called on Canada. The feeling that it's a foul, I just only see the hands. I'm sorry I know, if we miss it. Let me complain. Let me complain. I'm, I'm sorry about it. I, I think we missed it. No, I think listen, we missed it. Too late. I have to I defend mean. myself. If I break my neck, no, no, you listen, what? listen, listen. We are here also to protect no, you. No, no, no. Hey, listen, I'm talking, okay? Mistake is human. Maybe we made it one. Well, referees accepting that they uh, should have called a foul at the other end. But that's what gets frustrating when there's a foul on a blockout situation down the other end, and Powell has given up his body at the rim. Now, Powell needs to finish the play. It was a great delivery from Shea Gilders Alexander, but there was clear contact on that play. And, and Jeff, both players went down hard. You can understand why Powell's upset. Serbia up by 12. So Vramovic trying to hound Shea. Here he goes past him. Oh, terrific defense. Olenek steps back, and instead of passing, he shoots it. 
He faked Jovic out, had him turned around and went for the big three. Oh. And Shea Gilgis Alexander has just picked up his third foul. Well, you understand what Jordy Fernandez in Canada is upset about. Now, that's not a smart play to reach around and back to Shea Gilgis Alexander, but the, the contrast in the touch tap foul there compared to the physical situation that happened a few possessions ago with Powell. And now they're going to put. Dylan Brooks back in the game, and he has three fouls for Shea. Interesting choice here with 42 seconds to go. So, was it a technical call? Yeah, the technical was on the bench on. Okay, it's on. On Jordy. Okay, for, so he was complaining. Yeah. You know, and again they were they were talking possessions before as the situations have developed. Well, a run here for Serbia right at the end of this second quarter. And they go up by 15 points. Dylan Brooks passes to Alexander Walker. Another steal. Trying to get it to Brooks in the corner. Serbia in command right now, up 15 points. Seven seconds differential, the game clock and the shot clock, and Olenek takes it away. It's at the beautiful. Panel. Look at that! And Canada get a dunk out of it. That's a four-point swing right there. On one end, Jeff, great defense from Olenek. Look at him handle the pressure and an outstanding pass from Powell. Highlight play, teamwork against pressure. Great job from Canada. Serbia, timeout. Did you see the Dobrit? He took a shot from beyond half court at the end and it grazed the net, then he looked over it. Who was it? Alexander Walker. I mean, there's a little bit of gamesmanship going on out there. A little bit of trash talking. Well, Serbia has the advantage at this point. Well, look at Sue Bird, FIBA Women's World Cup 2026 ambassador. They announced the World Cup uh, today was going to be, well, they had a, a press conference ahead of the, you know, just to talk about the Women's World Cup that's going to be in Germany in 2026. And, of course, uh, no bigger name, really, in women's basketball, five-time Olympic champion, four-time World Cup winner, and uh, just uh, easily one of the all-time greats. 52-39. And you really have to wonder what can, what kind of adjustments Canada are going to make at halftime. Milutinov has made a huge difference for Serbia in this game, 11.6 rebounds. So, and now Carmelo Anthony 
also a FIBA Basketball World Cup 2023 ambassador sitting next to Pau Gasol, Luis Scola here as well, and Sue Bird. They're all lined up in front of us. They've got the best seats in the house and played for the United States, obviously one of the all-time greats for them. Jovic, and that shot does not go in from Milutinov. So at the end of uh, the first half, Serbia have to like their position, and Canada have got some work to do. It's Serbia leading at 52-39 against Canada at the break. Jeff, high percentage and precision describes Serbia. Again, 64% from the field, 50% from three. Again, they're out rebounding. 17 to nine, Serbia out rebounding Canada. Points in the paint, 22 to 12, fast break, 10 to six, advantages all over. Bogdanovic with 15. Again, these guys have come out and taken control of the game. Let's see if Canada can make some adjustments here heading into the second half. Key players for this game, look at that. Bogdanovic, he has all this experience with Serbia over the years, 15 points, three assists, three or four inside the arc, and Shea Gilgis-Alexander, who has been utterly sensational at this FIBA Basketball World Cup, he has four assists to go with his five points. Again, there were there were some signs from Canada. Great three-point shooting at times. I, I wouldn't say I'm surprised. Uh, the Serbia are on top. I think we kind of anticipated this was going to be a, a big hurdle for Canada to clear. But I think what it maybe is a little surprising is how they were able to go from trailing early. They were down a little bit. What were they down? Three points, but just really turned on the afterburners. Yeah, and again, a lot of it had to do with the defensive pressure. When Abramovich came in, he changed the game once again. Got stops, forced turnovers. The thing that this Serbia team does, they really execute. Again, we talk about precision. We talk about high percentage offense. They get what they want. They create advantages, and they work together for the shots that they want. And now on the defensive side, they've done an excellent job defending Shea Gilgis-Alexander. But I also have to say, Jeff, credit to Canada. They're making some very good team plays, teamwork against the pressure. They just need to be more efficient finishing their plays and hitting their shots. Only 42% in the first quarter, the first half. So if you're a Serbia fan right now, you're ecstatic, possible uh, spot in the final. Not that far away, and if you're Canada, no need to panic. Still plenty of time, but you better get to work. It's at halftime. 52-39, Serbia leading. Whatever our gender, color, belief, or capability, we are all on the same team. We have the power to change lives through basketball. Together, we are stronger. No matter, no matter your, your origin, origin, basketball can bring everyone together. Basketball for good. Hustles, gets it back. Quick pass, wide open. Jovic, and hangs on the rim for emphasis. Jeff, that's his great teamwork and awareness in the scramble. Davis Bertan, well, gonna go up. Now look at this, Mauro low, up to Bo Bonder! Oh, Bo Bonder! Maybe eat some of those Mo cookies. <laughs> and getting Germany in front. Nice pass to Portis. Break down defensively, and how many times have we seen Halliburton get into the paint, make a beautiful no-look pass? Guarded by Brooks, he spins, he gets away from him. 
look at that vantage. Just enough English to put it up and in. It's all Peter Vilfan in the house. Won in 1978 this title with Yugoslavia. Oh! oh! That's more like it for he, Paolo. He took that one off the board. Now Reeves from the right corner. And that's what the fans came to see, Austin Reeves. He was wide open. Dargars drives in. Are you kidding me? Dargars! With a hang time drive. Look at Schroeder though, gets it back, and he puts up the lob. And that is probably the best play of the game from Schroeder getting it right back and throwing it up there for Tice. Look at that. Put the brakes on this USA run right now. Alexander Walker goes in for the rim rocker. Again, no rim protection, no size. This is a small ball game. Alexander Walker. Oh, Procedo, what are you doing? And the alley oh! And Bancaro this time does not lay it up. He scores right at the end of the third quarter. Buzzer between the legs. alley -oop pass. Yes! I love it, Jeff. Yes! I'm sure you can have something better. in their own country, but also in the international basketball world forever. Well, Canada came in with uh a big ask. They were going to have to overcome one of the traditional powerhouses really in international basketball. Of course, Serbia, who used to be a part of Yugoslavia, now playing in this independent nation, and they have been uh, for the past 15 years. And it's really been a, a, a big test for this Canadian team. No matter how talented they are, Serbia just get it done. R.J. Barrett giving them some hope with his play. But it feels a little bit like how things were going when Serbia got on top of Lithuania. And you just don't know. It's going to be a difficult Serbia to solve. Ten points for R.J. Barrett. Three of seven from the floor. You can see where he hit his shots. A couple of threes from the right. Also one from the left where it looks like he was out of bounds, Mike. Yeah, and two misses are covering up that make in the upper corner. But, Jeff. Bogdan Bogdanovic showing leadership. This is an intelligent Serbia team, and the challenge for Canada in the semifinals for the first time is style of play. And you can see the efficiency, the high percentage execution from Serbia has controlled the tempo. So Canada had some opportunities early when Serbia left some plays unfinished, but in general, the foul trouble for Shea Gilgis Alexander slowed down that Canadian attack. They are, Serbia is making this Canadian team work hard for good shots. And at times they have done a great job with teamwork against the ball pressure, against the defense, but they've got to be more consistent with it in this second half. More importantly, you know, they've got to find a way to stop Bogdanovic. They've got to find a way to stop Serbia to cut into this deficit. I guess also what's really worrying right now uh, for Canada is the foul trouble. Dylan Brooks with three fouls, Shea Gilgis-Alexander with three fouls. 
Yeah, you know, again, when you're on the big stage in a semifinal game or, you know, in his, his next level appearance for the first time, people talk about experience and what's the difference. Well, managing the game, you know, making decisions to keep yourself out of foul trouble. Again, Shea Gilgis Alexander with a back tip, unnecessary foul, picks up his third. You know, it, it probably won't be a big factor in the game, but again, it's just something there that they have to deal with that can disrupt them. So credit to Serbia for the way they've managed it and the way they've handled it. They took control, they're in position, and let's see what changes and adjustments Jordi Fernandez and staff can make to try to turn the game their way. Just seven players have played for Canada so far. I don't know what that indicates. Uh, you know, with Serbia as well. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They've had 10 of their 12 players get on the court. And bench, bench production is pretty similar. 12 points for Serbia, eight for Canada. But you know, there were a couple opportunities. You know, we haven't seen Egypt tonight. I'm actually, I'm actually wrong. There were brief appearances for Trey Bell Haynes and Kyle Alexander. Yeah, they came in during our technical difficulty stretch, so it was easily to be distracted over here, Jeff. So Serbia warming up, and who knows? We could have a rematch of 2014 when the USA uh, beat Serbia in Spain in the final. Or we, we'll wait and see how Germany come out and play the USA later. They certainly played them in a tough game this summer, and um, I would think that Germany could offer some really tough opposition. Yeah, Jeff, there's a buzz in the arena right now. You know, these games, these teams, this is what it's all about here at the World Cup. We've got a fantastic Final Four. A lot of anticipation for that USA-Germany game later. And for right now, in the present, let's see what this second half holds in store for us. So if you're gonna beat Serbia, you have to figure out, you have to get on top of this man right here, Bogdan Bogdanovic. Easier said than done. Just all round solid performance for Serbia in that first, uh, first half. Bogdanovic, five of six from the floor. He's hit both of his three pointers. Just in terms of rebounding, I mean, can you imagine just nine rebounds for for Canada? Yeah. You know, the reality is Slovenia in the quarterfinals. Yes, that's a tough game, uh, but they're not nearly as tough this summer as they haven't been in past summers. And this Serbia team is definitely a step up. Yeah, and I really love them playing inside through Milutinov. He's done a great job here in the first half, and he has that size and physicality advantage. You know, Jeff, we haven't seen Zach Eady. I would love to see Zach Eady get his go. At oh, maybe Militinov. we will. College basketball's player of the year last season, right, with Purdue? Purdue's finest boilermaker in the house. We saw him shine a couple years ago at the under-19 FIBA Basketball World Cup, just like we saw Nikola Jovic for Serbia play. Well, what have you got to say about Jip 
and uh, he has just been spectacular. We're seeing him do things at this stage of the competition that we just didn't think was possible for a mascot. Still not showing any favoritism, of course. Well, scan in the QR code to get the FIBA Basketball World Cup official app in your smartphone. And we are underway here in the Mall of Asia. The second half, the whistle blows. And for whatever reason, the clock doesn't stop. Start on time, I think. So they will take an additional two, three, four seconds off the clock, interestingly. Scorekeeper a bit slow at the desk over there. Scores table. I think he was looking over here courtside and saw Carmelo, Pau Gasol, Luis Scola, Sue Bird, saw the superstars, got a little distracted to start the second half. Well, it's kind of a distraction for us. I mean, when all these guys come in and sit down right in front of you, what are you supposed to say? Jeff, they're not looking at us. No, exactly. And it took a half to get used to it, but now we're ready. So, Stefan Jovic, guarded by Barrett. Now, Milatinov. Over to Jovic. Jovic, a little runner, misses. Maybe not the best offense for Serbia at the start. Dylan Brooks, again, he's got the three fouls. He comes right out and hits the three. And that's a great start for Canada. Defensive stop at one end. Shea Gilgis Alexander pushing in transition, finding Dylan Brooks. Great start for Team Canada. And again, Brooks, you know how he plays defense. He's got to watch it. He is really getting up on Bogdanovich. Bogdanovich passes back to Jovic. Jovic drives, has it stripped out of his hands, and now Kelly Olenek picks it up. So good defense to start for Canada, and that Olenek was going to pass it, and then he was like, I'm so close, I might as well just shoot it. And Shea. another steal for Canada. Shea. And it doesn't drop for Shea Gilgis Alexander. But you love the pace if you're Canada. You want to play faster. You want to play up and down. Olenek got caught in between. And then Shea, again, trying to generate some rhythm for himself. Just missed the open three. He's missed two threes. He's one of five from the floor. Bogdanovich. And Brooks, for whatever reason, couldn't rebound it. So he hit it off the backboard. And it goes to Canada. Oh. Steps back, misses the fade. Dobrich goes down again. Remember, here is Nikola Jovic for two. And again, Canada had two or three possessions there to try to get a bucket, trim into the lead. Jovic knocks it down. Dylan Brooks from the left corner. That's more like it. Again, he has so much self-confidence. Sometimes it's a little bit unrealistic, but right now, Barry's a big three when Canada needs it. Nine point game. Nikola Jovic just hit the jumper. Now the ball knocked away. Canada pick it up. It was RJ Barrett that got the deflection. And he drives in and draws the foul on Stefan Jovic. And now we're starting to see something from Canada. Well, again, Jeff, this is about tempo of the game. They are getting stops and turnovers and getting out of transition. And you can see Canada's an excellent transition team. Here's Barrett to the rim, drawing the foul. Three fouls on Stefan Jovic. Been that kind of game for Canada, frustratingly, yeah. seeing that happen. They shot it well from the line. 
They've had opportunities to trim into this lead even more. But the most important thing is they've picked the tempo up because they've established some defense here in the third quarter. Well, RJ will be frustrated with those two misses. That would have cut it to seven. Bounce pass to Bogdanovich. And Brooks stays in front of him. And he has picked up his fourth foul. And again, the foul trouble from the first half complicates the run here to start the third quarter. But look at Bogdanovich. He's changing the timing of his shot. He's working middle. No, he's into his shot, uses his body so well, draws the foul. Wait, wait, wait. He was, listen to me now. He was saying no from here, and then he said yes, and nobody communicated to me, and now you guys are coming and saying that you didn't give it to him. Somebody's got to tell me. You know what I'm saying? I wanted the information, but this is not our protocol. We need to talk to them, not yeah, to you. you guys gotta tell me. Not to you, not to you. So he just makes one of two free throws. Did you understand that conversation? Yeah. So there must have been some communication about fouls that was not communicated to the Canadian bench. Jordy wanted some clarity. I think he got mixed messages. But now this is an important time. Nikhil Alexander Walker has been really good here in this semifinal. It's only a 10 point game. Canada has plenty of opportunity. Wow. And they call a charge on Kelly Olenek. Now he's got three fouls. Jeff, I have a hard time seeing a charge with that play yeah. right there. Yeah, I got to agree with you. Canada. Here's Jovic missing again. Good job, Canada but not able to rebound it. It'll stay at this end. Well, you like the response from Canada defensively to try to get some stops. They've started this third quarter strong. They've just got to clean up their offense and finish some plays. Oh, Dobritz uh, just red shirts there for the rebounds. Okay. Picks up the dribble. Gets it back to RJ. RJ gets in. Oh, what a move that was from RJ Barrett. And Jeff, what we see from Canada now, the individual Ooh. talent. Nikola Jovic looks like he's injured himself. His uh, left leg. Here he is guarding Barrett. And has he like injured his groin? It might have been a knee to the thigh. But the individual talent of Shea Gilgis Alexander and RJ Barrett can create offense one on one. If they continue with their defense, they will always have the opportunity to create good shots. Eight points. Canada needed to establish themselves right at the start of the third quarter. They have done that. Serbia. Give it to Jovic and can you believe it? He scores on the drive. He's going to the line. Jeff at one end, he can't barely walk with the knee not to the thigh. And now he turns the corner and finishes. No elevation on the play, but found a way to score. Didn't really see where the contact was there, but a fantastic finish. So it takes it back to a 10 point lead. Alexander Walker for three. He Canada has, showing some fight. He has played so well. Giving them a spark when they need it. Great three-point shooting there. He's got eight points. Quick pass to Dobrich. He just easily finds his way in there, finds some space, and scores. 
Olenek takes the bop. And he's got a couple of free throws. So Olenek, because of that last foul that they called the charge, he's got four fouls. Dylan Brooks has four fouls. And there is Pedrak Danilovic, one of the legends of Serbian basketball, Serbian basketball with the Federation as well. makes it. Danilovic is actually the president of the Serbian Basketball Federation. He has been for some time. So Lenik is going to get a break. Remember, he's got the four fouls. Canada now in a box and one on Bogdanovic, potentially. That was also Michael Bartlett, the president of the Can... Canada Basketball Federation, or Canada Basketball, and oh. inside the Dobrins again. Again, finishing plays at the rim. Excellent offense from Serbia. So Alexander Walker runs the baseline to the right corner. Here is Shea, and maybe it's going to be Shea that starts to get hot. But you can see the composure. He got where he wanted. Nice fadeaway and beautiful touch for SGA. Well, what a drive that was from Stefan Jovic. Just read the defense. And Jeff, that's too easy from, from Lou Dort, an outstanding defender. And Shea Gilgis Alexander gets the foul called on Milutinov. That's so tough to guard right there. Changing speed. Changing pace. So athletic. Milutinov, yup, contact and got the shooting hand. I mean, this is a talent and a skill to draw fouls. Shea Gilgis Alexander does such a great job getting to the free throw line. Bogdanovic drifts in, and his pass goes out of bounds, but a foul called on Dort. So both teams now over the limit. Three and a half minutes remaining. Obviously, the foul trouble worse for Canada. Dobrins, he's been a problem. A little runner. Just a great finish in the lane. Again, they're they're not shooting these high percentages for not for no reason. Great finish. Alexander Walker, what a wow. spin move and bucket! Right at the big man, not just a three-point shooter. Alexander Walker has been great for Team Canada. Dobritz, a good reaction from Powell to get a hand on it. Davidovic, though, left wide open. And that was a bullet dodged for Canada. Lou Dort drives in strong. And... Powell couldn't collect the rebound. It goes out of bounds. It's been a, a great first quarter for Canada other than finishing. Really good effort there from Dort. Pushed in transition, went to the rim strong. Canada has trimmed into the deficit, but still more work to do here. Down by seven. 
Seven less makes for Canada. He's done a decent job at the line. Here's Milutinov. Spinning, turning, putting it up, and it goes! And one coming from Milutinov, who has 13 points, nine rebounds. One of the big, the best big men you can find in European basketball, that's for sure. Look at this ball. Look at that. Just soft touch, but he has the size and physical advantage on the Canadian front court. Jordy Fernandez and staff have to be considering a bigger body matchup on that low post. Bogdanovich goes over to the bench to get a breather. Abramovich comes back in, as well as Guterich. The Dobritz remains in the game. Stefan Jovic out. RJ for three, that's short. Chance of Serbia ringing throughout the Mall of Asia right now. Canada up against it. Good defense from Shea. And there's going to be 4.4 seconds left. And look at this, we are going to see Zakidi check into the game to compete against Milutinov. Hey, Jeff, I really like the sub. Melvin Edgem as well comes in. Another tough-minded defensive player and great rebounder. But now take a look. Countering the sub on the other side, Coach Pesic puts in pick-and-pop shooting. Petrusev. Yeah, Petrusev will be, oh, that's going to be Canada basketball. Oh, but wait. No, it's going to be Serbia basketball. Yeah, that was kicked by Dort. Sorry. I thought Abramovich got it. And that's tough for Zach Eady because of the matchup adjustment from Serbia. Olinikin with four fouls. Lithuania's players here watching today. Moti Yunus. He'll battle for fifth place tomorrow against Latvia and was probably going to be one of the best all time battles for fifth place. A Baltic battle. So Zach Eady goes right back out. And Canada counter by bringing Kelly Olenek back in. So the referee goes over, Matsoni, the Italian referee, goes over to talk to Jordi Fernandez. And I think he's saying that Zach Eady has to go back in. He's not allowed to sub. And Alina goes back out, so Zach Eady will get in. And you can see how big Eady is, and now Serbia are going to try to think their way through this. Edge of Guterich, they get the mismatch. He loses it, and a foul called on I believe Zach Eady trailing Guterich. Watch this. They did indeed call that foul on Eady. Eady had his hand straight up, and Nikhail Alexander Walker deflected the ball out of bounds. Canada that close to forcing a turnover. Instead, Guterich to the free throw line. And Jeff, this is only a 10 point game at this point. Canada showed they can make a run and create opportunities to cut into the lead. They have not done it to this point, but the possibilities will be there to start the fourth quarter. Well, again, don't forget they were down 12 against Spain in the, in the last game of the second round that they had to win. Oh, look at that. Offensive rebound, Guterich. Now they're going to take it back out. Abramovich throws it out of bounds, so a break for Canada.
Yeah, gives us Alexander, just goes hard and gets to the basket. With the smaller lineups out here, more space to get to the rim. Olenek in a five out formation. That's the easiest SGA has got to the rim all evening. Here's Guterich. Steps back. Oh boy. How about Guterich? Nine points now. Two of a couple of threes, but Shea Gilgis, Alexander gets two right back. Six and a half second difference on the game clock and the shot clock. Marinkovic, he can shoot it as well. And Jeff Olinick, a forward, mostly a five man defender, gets pulled in. And now a technical foul. A technical foul has been called. Is it on Guterich? Coach. On Pezic? Yeah, on Pezic. And Jeff, you just wonder. That How can you get a technical in that situation? Really tough timing right there. You wonder what pushed it over the edge. It seemed to come out of nowhere. He just hit a, a three to go up 13. So 8.3 remaining. Jordy Fernandez, who also had a technical called on him. So both coaches now can't afford another technical or they'll get early showers. There goes Shea. He looks over to Olenek. He puts it up. And that is going to count if it goes, and it does not. And more frustration for Canada, who narrowly win that quarter 24 to 23 but they're still down 12 it's serbia leading at 75 63 over canada so jeff again canada showing improvement both ends of the floor they're improving their shooting percentages up to 48 percent for the game 44 percent from three they're still being out rebounded 25 to 15, and points in the paint remain 34 to 20 for Serbia. But again, they got some defensive stops, forced some turnovers, got out of transition. They were unable to really cut into the lead, but you start to see signs of rhythm and scoring from Shea Gilgis Alexander. They've got to find a way to put some consecutive stops together this fourth quarter and cut into that gap. Well, you look at where Serbia have uh, have scored their buckets, and they have scored a lot in the lane tonight. You know, both both teams pretty comparable from three-point range, and um, if you're a Canada fan watching this. What you know, what do you tell them? Well, you start to you're encouraged that they got defensive stops. You're encouraged they had opportunities, but they need to be more efficient. Well, scanning the barcode to get the FIBA Basketball World Cup 2023 app in your smartphone. Everything you need, results, scores, stats, links to news, videos, it's all there. Thank you very much, Jim. You've done your job. Now go sit down. Dylan Brooks is going to come back into the game. He's got four fouls. Guterich remains. In terms of foul trouble for Serbia, Guterich and Stepanjovic each with three, whereas Canada have Alexander Walker, Shea Gilgis Alexander, each with three fouls, four fouls for Olenek and four for Dylan Brooks. And now the steal from Abramovich! So, a new plan of attack for Serbia. Chaos with their D. Brooks comes out. His three attempt rims out. Well, Jeff, that's exactly the way you stop a run, you know, for Serbia. And, you know, you start the quarter. 
not what you want for Canada. Your MVP candidate loses the ball. And he comes right back and makes a play, takes it away. But look at the hands from Davidovic. Serbia locked in right now. One minute into the fourth quarter, up 14. And Petrusev into the corner. Three-pointer, good from Guterich. But it starts with a gamble, Gilgis Alexander. Quickly to the other end, though. Barrett to cut it back to 15. Canada needs stops. Avramovic races in. And Davidovic follows up the miss. And Jordi Fernandez calls timeout. Serbia are flying, leading by 17 points. And Jeff, this Canadian lineup has been outstanding defensively the entire tournament. A gamble from Gilgis Alexander, beaten off the dribble. Serbia fundamentally sound, creating advantages too easily at this important point in the game. We're gonna go swinging, all right? No fucking quitting. Rebounding everybody. The whole fucking eight minutes. Together. Body language. Everybody. Fight together. We go go. All right, go for him. You're gonna have the ball. Watch the press. We're gonna go maple from here. Lou, you're in the corner. RJ, you're in the corner. You got it out, all right? And we gonna go in the tag. Come on, come on, together on three. One, two, three. Well, that was really more of a, a case of, come on, psychologically. So Vramovic did knock it away with the steal and went down. And did you see the body language change for Canada during that phase? Yeah, but Jeff, this is experience on this stage. The Serbian team out of the quarter break, comes out ready to make a run and take control of the game. This is a new experience for Canada. Dylan you Brooks see it. showing some leadership. Great response out of the timeout. Again, Jordy motivating his team. Dylan Brooks stepping up. This Canada team has heart. There's no doubt about it. Brooks was barking at the, uh, the referee about something. Remember, he's got four fouls. Guterich has it knocked away off of him and out of bounds. Good play by Powell. So this is Canada's best defensive lineup. They've been really good all tournament. And you see there the deflection from Powell. Good hands. Abramovich goes down, hoping to draw a charge. Now Barrett gets it deep, back outside to Brooks. Another three attempt. And front and back of the rim. Stays out. Lou Dork guarding Abramovich. He gets around him. He drives in. How about that from Abramovich? Just a great finish. One of the most anonymous players coming into this tournament for Serbia, and he has delivered. RJ. Gets back and hits a three to make it a 13-point game. But again, if you're Canada, you cannot trade baskets here. you got to try to fight your way back into it. Get some stops. You can see Lou Dort cross-matched on Avramovic right now. Avramovic has been a problem. He was against Lithuania. He is tonight against Canada. Dort reaches up and bumps into him. Milutinov. Milutinov, meanwhile, has also checked back into the game for Serbia, and now Bogdanovic is going to come back into the game. So it doesn't get any easier for Canada. I'm not sure what M Marinkovic was uh, frustrated by. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, that was a hug that came out of nowhere. <laughs> Good 
Guterich. To Milutino. Milutino turns. Wow. What can you say? Just so solid. Milutino now. 14 points, uh, 16 points, nine rebounds. And the foul, Davidovitz. And again, Abramovich pressuring Shea Gilders Alexander. Look at that between the legs. Yeah, just so good with the ball, but credit to Serbia's defense. They are making him work. Abramovich coming up and talking to Shea. I I think he's probably trying to distract him. Here's Barrett. He goes up. What a finish from R.J. Barrett. Wow, he's been impressive scoring tonight. He's been a bright spot for Canada. 19 points for R.J. Barrett. The second consecutive game, he has been a real standout. Guter is spinning. Puts it up, and Powell able to bat it out to Shea. Shea into the paint, takes the contact, and he will go to the line. Well, doing anything and everything he can right now, and I guess it's good if the, if the clock stops for Canada. Look at this. Yeah. I think Pezic doesn't see Davidovic uh, grab him on the on the left arm. Well, he is so good with the ball. It gets where he wants to go, changing speeds. He's drawn seven fouls in the game. Just does such a fantastic job getting to the free throw line. So they shot free throw as well. There's Luis Scola, FIBA Basketball World Cup 2023 ambassador and one of the legends of international basketball. Just one of two. And like I told you, one of my favorite players, funny seeing him sit courtside along with Pau Gasol and Carmelo Anthony. Boy, they have really come out for this. 12-point lead for Serbia. Canada need a stop. Guterich, Bogdanovic, Gets in, puts it up. Good box out from Powell. And now the foul, and that is going to help Canada. Well, it's only the third team foul in Serbia, in fact. Good defense there from Canada. Force a really tough shot from Bogdanovic. And as you say, the blockouts are excellent. Got to be consistent defensively here. Milutunov having himself a game. Here's Barrett. Gets in. And good try from Barrett. And another foul called on Serbia. This one on Guterich. Just excellent work. Because I need to analyze. And I need to be sure. Yes, but then the hip twist. And that's it. I, I see the hip So Barrett makes the free throw. He's got 20 points. He's the leading scorer for Canada. Again, five minutes to go in the game. You have the offensive firepower with Shea Gilgis Alexander, with RJ Barrett. You have the possibilities to come back. This is the defensive end where you've got to win this game if you're Canada. They've got to find a way to get some stops. Serbia get it across in time to Davidovic. Ten point game. Brooks trying to stay with him. Bogdanovic. Five on the shot clock. Here's Bogdanovic again. Oh my goodness. The word unstoppable comes to mind now. The I mean, way he's playing. And great, now he's playing D. Great footwork. And Milutinov 
comes in for the block. He goes out of bounds, 19 on the shot clock. Ter and terrific effort from him as well, Brooks. Here's that Euro step, stepping through for the finish. Barrett from the left. And Jeff, that's really good offense from Canada. Consecutive pass, rhythm corner three for one of your top players, RJ Barrett. They just came up short. Bogdanovich from the left. Oh boy, that is a dagger from Bogdan Bogdanovich. He's got 21 points. So impressive. The ball at the feet of Brooks. He picks it up, he drives in, and he's fouled as well. You love Brooks' physicality, impacting the game in so many ways. Thank you. Only one. One. One shot, one. Pressure in the backcourt. Jovic, shot clock about to expire. He launches it. And Dort goes up and grabs the rebound. So it didn't hit the rim, so that turns it back over. It's a 12-point game, three minutes, 24 seconds left. So Barrett's gonna go out, I would imagine, briefly, and come back in quickly. Yeah, Jordy's just trying to get Shea Gilders Alexander for the last possession, this possession, RJ Barrett, a quick rest for a final push. Alexander Walker. Long rebound to Dort. Dylan Brooks. And again, they battle for it. Davidovic on the ground, gets the basketball, and it's going to be Serbia. Possession. Time running short for Canada now. They've had some really good looks here. I really like the way they're working together to get some shots here. Unfortunately for them, they've come up short, but Serbia has to continue to execute. They cannot have a possession like the last one that resulted in no passes and a shot clock violation. Milutunov has it taken away by Dort, who wanted to pull up and take a three, but now back to Barrett, who's checked in, and now he dribbles into trouble, and Bogdanovich takes it away. And Barrett remains on the ground, he's gonna get up slowly. And Milutunov to Davidovich, he gets blocked, but he gets it back and puts it up and in. And the pass intercepted by Bogdanovich who goes in and scores. And Serbia are two minutes and 12 seconds away from celebrating a win over Canada that is gonna put them back into the final at the FIBA Basketball World Cup. Dylan, 
You're gonna flash really high. Shay, as you bring it, you're gonna hit. You're gonna follow your pass. RJ, you're gonna get out of the corner. Shay, you're gonna keep it to the rim. Lou, you're gonna hammer Nikhil. Nikhil to the corner. Try to find a three, score quick. Once we score, everything has to be a steal and a three. A steal and a three. All right, fight Stop until everything. the end. Here we go. Together on three. One, two, three. Yes. Bogdanovich playing the passing lane, making winning plays, showing his leadership. Well, he's, every game, you know what he's going to get. But, Jeff, this has been Serbia's game. Well, you got to really tip your hat to them. They come here without Nikola Jokic at this FIBA Basketball World Cup, but they've got Milutinov, the center, who has been immense. And then you've got the other veterans like Bogdanovic, uh, the players like Abramovich who have come out and just excelled. And, and Dobrins, don't forget how well he played in the first half. They've got experience in these games. And if you don't know international basketball and you just look at the names, you think Canada's the favorite in this game. But the reality is experience counts in international basketball. And there is Barrett driving in and scoring. Barrett's had a really good effort out here today. 23 to lead Canada. So Milutinov has, Milutinov has fouled. Alexander Walker, Barrett, Brooks, they go out, they've battled, and uh, nothing to hang their heads about. They've come up against a really good team today. Kyle Alexander in the game, Phil Scrub in the game, Melvin Edgem, Trey Bell Haynes, Zach Eady for Canada. So getting some minutes here. Jovic, and his shot goes off the top of the backboard and goes out of bounds. It's an incredible story. And don't forget Borisha Simonic, who took a blow to the side. And uh, it damaged, it, he had some damage, and he needed his kidney removed for Serbia. And that has been a source of inspiration for those players. That was something that Bogdan Bogdanovic talked about in the press conference in the last game. So he is fouled, Zach Eady, and scores over Milutinov. And just seeing that, it just kind of makes you wonder. <laughs> Maybe. Well, yeah, he, he, he got could have it. contributed. Yeah, I mean, you know. The, the, I'm taking nothing away. I'm not coaching. I'm just, I was impressive move from Edie. The thing about Zach Edie, he's, a, he's the future. He's a big man. All of these minutes and seconds out here are going to be valuable for him. It's great. Jordy and his staff got him in the game. He's not ready for the, you know, big responsibility in the game. But in a moment like this, he can come out and make a play, and that's really encouraging for Canada. So Phil Scrub guarding uh, Bogdanovich. Here he is launching it from deep and just hitting the backboard. Trey Bell Haynes. I mean, you know, what do you think? Is there anything Canada could have done differently looking back on it to prepare for this game or to get ready? That's a tap in for Edie. Yeah, Jeff, I, I think that they really had plenty of opportunities in the game. The foul trouble came back to get, make, make, complicate things for them. But in general, this was more about Serbia playing well and more efficient than Canada throughout the entire 40 minutes. Well, you can't believe it, folks, or can you? Serbia, one of the powerhouses, reminding us once again they are among the best. They have made it to the final of the FIBA Basketball World Cup. They win it 95-86 over Canada. 
Serbia will now face the winner of the United States and Germany, who square off next in the second semifinal. And Canada will take on the loser of that next game in the battle for third place. So this incredible adventure. And let's don't forget, Canada have qualified for the Olympics. It's the first time they've done that in, since 2000. But Serbia, you have to you have to really be happy for them after what they've what they've been through. They fell to Italy in the group. They finished second. And maybe the break that they got was the Lithuania win uh, over the United States because then that put Italy against the United States instead of Serbia. And Serbia were able to play Lithuania in the quarterfinals. And now Serbia will not face the United States until the final, and that is if they beat Germany. And who knows what's going to happen, but maybe history is going to repeat itself and we're going to see those two teams play each other again, uh, just as happened in 2014. Serbia has been so impressive. And when you love team basketball, you love the way they play. Intelligent, high percentage, efficient. Again, their players really make good decisions on the floor. And today, they controlled the tempo for the majority of the game against Canada. Great experience for Canada. You can see the numbers. Big rebounding advantage with the size, 33 to 22. Bogdanovich leading the way, 23. Dobrich, Milutunov, 16. RJ Barrett, really good for, for the Canadian team. But this is Serbia's moment. They've earned it. Well, you know what? Serbia took control of this game really in the first half, and it's not a team that you want to try to chase down once they get their noses in front. No, they're very intelligent. They play together, and they maximize each possession. The intensity and focus with which they play is very impressive, and when you give them an advantage, they will make you pay. So really, in terms of Serbia, where do you th what do you think has made the difference for this team since the end of the second round? Well, I think they're playing emotionally for their fallen teammate, Borisha Simanic. I think that has helped emotionally charge this team. I think their experience in recent years where they've gone through some difficult times I think the pieces fit really well together, and they're very underrated. And again, just the high percentage, precise efficiency of their game. This is championship level basketball on both ends. I mean, there's just the, the play of this team, the togetherness, the way they've come out and found a chemistry and an ability to execute on offense and to be tough. The toughness of this team, you have to love it. Yeah, if you're, if you're a basketball purist, you really enjoy watching these guys play. And again, Jeff, with all of the stuff going on with emotional discipline with different teams we've seen, this team is on task and focused the entire game. Well, maybe just maybe. They want to play the USA, you never know, but it's going to be USA and Germany. They're going to play the second semifinal. You see the road to the final for Serbia. They had to beat Lithuania, and now they've overcome Canada, who suffered their second defeat of the competition. And uh, no matter what you say for Canada, who are going to play in the third place game against the loser of the second semifinal, they've had a step forward this summer. So it has been a tremendous exercise of basketball excellence for Serbia when it matters most. They have beaten a talented team from Canada. They have shown they remain one of the powerhouses of international basketball. On to the title game goes Serbia.
Well, stay here for additional post-game coverage, including cameras in the locker room and the... Ognjen Dobrić, Nikola Jović, Vanja Marinković, momci, šta kažete na ovo? Šta? Nikola! E, dođi, dođi za ovo! Idemo, idemo, Nikola! Dođi vam! Evo ga najveći! Evo ga najveći! Evo ga najveći! Evo ga najveći! Idemo, momci! Kao najstariji, ja ću... Evo, da... So, as a reminder, stay here for additional post-game coverage, including cameras in the locker room and the press conferences. I, naravno, ovaj, čestito bi svima celom timu, ekipi, igračima i stručnom štabu na ulazku u finale, ali daćemo sve od sebe da i u tom finalu pokažemo zube i naravno idemo na zlato. Ako bude to 